I got up there and Onright and O'Toole were right in my brain saying, you better be happy up there, Duffy. Could you not be happy on Sunday? It should be a national holiday. It's Grey Cup Sunday. Welcome to Sports Center with Jan Dan, uh, brought to you by Tim Hortons, Calgary playing host uh, to the 107th Grey Cup between the Bombers uh, and the uh, Tabbies. And a drought was going to come to an end in this one. Finally. And a drought that didn't come to an end, thankfully, was you bringing in your Grey Cup chili. Uh, a huge hit for everyone, including uh, cameraman Glenn. Uh, he was late. He didn't get any. No. Uh, there's still some remnants in the pot, but uh, it's been well, sitting there's on a, some for, in the pot for you. It's been sitting on a counter in our, in our offices for three hours. It's fine. It's just a little lukewarm. Hey, let's go to Calgary because this was a big game, Dan, because you had big droughts. You had Hamilton, 20-year Grey Cup drought. You had Winnipeg, almost a 30-year Grey Cup drought. 29 years since they last won the Grey Cup. 107th edition. Weather was pretty decent. Two degrees, I was told, by James Duthie, who was there, and in a pretty good mood. Dane Evans replaced the injured Jeremiah Masoli back in August. It's a tempo early, and Evans the First pass of the game. Picked, the tipped and picked by Brandon Alexander. Tabby's next possession. Evans stripped of the football by Willie Jefferson. Adam Big Hill would recover. The Ticats turned the ball over three times in the opening quarter. Now let's go back to the pregame. Andrew Harris playing with a serious chip on his shoulder. In the post. You got my back! I got your back! You got my back! I got your back! You got my back! I got your back! All right, let's go then, baby. Win! 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 The CFL's rushing leader and Winnipeg native ready to go. Here's Andrew Harris. Harris! as always, is on the call. 15 yards, opening the scoring, 7-0 Blue Bombers. Just before the second quarter, Chris Stradley over the top, and it's Harris with the catch in the end zone, 18-yard score. Harris, an incredible first half, 88 total yards, 18-6 Winnipeg, and the Bombers winning the special teams back. Frankie Williams. the German native Theodric Hansen with a double D on. And by the way, the Beaches, great band from Toronto, very good in the pregame. Brandon Banks, meanwhile, the second half, gets hit hard. Bad news, out of the game. More body injury, the MOP of 2019. Massive loss for the Tabbies. That's still lots of time. Tabby's down 18, lining up for a field goal. Trickery, Luke Tasker. We'll get the first down a couple plays later. And it's Jeff Bramble. He never ages either. Evans to Braylon Addison, four-yard score. Hamilton's first TD of the game cuts the lead to 12. Reinbold, the old Bombers coach. Fourth quarter, Evans to Mike Jones behind the coverage. Would have been a big, big game, but he drops it. And he was hurt on the play. So instead of first and goal, Hamilton is forced to punt. Oh, yeah. Here come the Mounties. I, I get emotional. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? Eight minutes to play. Harris, second and 17. Breaks three tackles. Picks up a first down that would lead to a field goal. Bombers back up by 18. Five minutes to play. Jackson Jeffcoat, who fought the Civil War. Not only strips Evans, but recovers that fumble. The Tabby's fifth turnover of the night. Evans was sacked six times. Bombers are closing in. Mike O'Shea knew the Gatorade shower was coming. Look at him closing his eyes. It's orange if you laid a bet on it. <laughs> they have put the win back in Winnipeg. The Blue Bombers, 2019, Great Cup champions. And what a moment for Zach Kolaros, who's knocked out in the first game of the season against the Tabbies. Simone Lawrence hit him, concussion. Left the Riders, ended up with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers after a stop in Toronto. There's Andrew Harris, first ever to win Most Valuable Player and Most Valuable Canadian in the same Grey 
Cup. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers 29 year old drought is over. For the dress they are the 2019 right Manitoba Grey Cup Manitoba champions. Going off all week. And I know what you're asking me. What about the guy who uh, said he wouldn't wear pants until the Bombers won the Grey Cup? Oh, we'll get to him in the show. Stay tuned. We will get to him. How about Harris? What a performance. Kalaros, great to see him bounce back. He's a Grey Cup champion. Hamilton has lost their last three Grey Cup appearances, the previous two in 2013 and 2014. Here's Sarah Orleski with the most valuable player and most outstanding Canadian. What was going through your mind knowing that you guys had accomplished the goal? I honestly couldn't believe it. It's uh, it's surreal right now. I'm so proud of my teammates. My city, I love you guys. I'm coming home with that cup. Woo! It was uh, all game. I, you know, we were in the zone. I was feeling it, and uh, man, what a great game. First people you think of when you when you know that you've won the Grey Cup? Oh, man, everyone that taught me along the way, all the haters out there, I talk Sorry about language, but this is for you. I can't even put it into words. I just love this group of guys, these coaches, guys that have fought all year and love putting it on the line for the person next to them. Was there any doubt in your mind, was there any doubt in your mind that you would be able to finish this game? No. I mean, the whole season, it's just guys landing on the line for the teammates, and it's just, you got, you want to be out there. This is the great cup. This is the great cup. I don't know. These are my brothers, man. We fought all year. The ups and the downs, fighting adversity. You know what I'm saying? Going against the CFL, they they betting against us. Man, it's, it's, it means everything, man. Zach, if we told you in May, at, over here, Rough Riders camp, Argonauts, Blue Bombers win the Grey Cup, what would you have told us? This is what's going to happen I to you this year. That's cool. Let's yeah. do it. If you had told me we were in the Grey Cup, I'd be like, all right, if that's the path to do it, then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not about me. You know, I mean, I know it was a crazy year for me personally, but those guys in that locker room um, have worked so hard the last three, four years. Coach O'Shea um, getting those guys ready. It, I can't really put it into words, man. It's a really special group. I think the, the city of Winnipeg, the diehard fans that are so good, the province, um, our Winnipeg Bomber fan, Blue Bomber fans that travel and that are scattered around the country, uh, they should feel a tremendous amount of pride for their team, and they do. So I'm very happy for them. Um, but I don't know, it's, this is awesome, but it probably take a little while to sink in. They're having a great time in Winnipeg, and take a look at Andrew Harris and the stats. You know, he had that two-game suspension in the regular season, tested positive for a performance-enhancing drug. He still maintains his innocence over that, wasn't eligible for most, valuable, most outstanding player or most outstanding Canadian at the CFL Awards, but wins both the Grey Cup MVP and top Canadian in the big game. And to make matters worse, with that Bombers victory, the Tabbies now own the longest Grey Cup drought in the Canadian Football League by a long shot. In fact, every other team has won this decade. The Alouettes now have the second longest drought, but they won back in 2010. Oilers playing the second of a back-to-back. -back. They're taking on the Coyotes. Connor McDavid, scorching numbers during a 10-game point streak, averaging over two points a game. Edmonton power play early. McDavid spots Leon Dreisaitl. Dish to a uh, James Neal in front. And he's the real deal. McDavid's point streak reaches 11. Dreisaitl with points in 10 of those 11 games. Uh, it's one all in the second when Sam Gagne takes the pass in the neutral zone. Oliver ekman Larson. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Gagne centering pass blocked, but he gets it back and finds out Chase up. Beats Kemper. Oilers are back in front in the desert. Gagne uh, filling in for the injured Brian Nugent Hopkins. Still in the second. Between the benches, McDavid lays a hit on Fisher. Moments later, Fisher gets loose in his... Uh, He's alone in the high slot. Wires home the one timer. Game tied at two. Uh, let's see what happened there. You can see Fisher grabs on to McDavid's leg. Uh, linesman comes in to break it up uh, as play continues. This one needed a shootout. McDavid first to go for Edmonton. He likes to go wide and then tucks it past Kemper. That's the only goal of the shootout. McDavid and Dry Settle. 
logged over four minutes of ice time in overtime as the Oilers win both parts of the back-to-back. -back. The Patriots had a chance to make it 17 consecutive seasons with at least 10 wins if they beat the Cowboys on Sunday, but that's not as important as the latest edition of Are They Related? Because it's been brought to our attention that the new Captain Highliner could not only be related to Dan O'Toole, he is Dan O'Toole. Okay, he is Dan O'Toole. Hey, Highliner Canada, you owe my guy some residuals. Dan, your thoughts? Uh, get, give me some of those fish sticks. Give Dan some of that fish stick money, Highliner. You John stole Brady the boy's face. <laughs> you stole his damn face. All right, playmaker. Let's see if they did it. At Foxborough, rain was coming down. Block punt set up New England for excellent field position here in the first quarter. And Tom Brady finds the rookie, Nikhil Harry. First career NFL TD. Brady admitted earlier this week he's not like the Cowboys since coming out of the womb. Brady grew up in the Bay Area, so that makes sense. New England up 7-0 after one. Weather conditions obviously an issue. Dak Prescott bobbles the snap. Then looking for Amari Cooper. He's picked off by Stephon Gilmore. New England's 20th interception this season. That's the most in the NFL by far. Back on the sidelines, Dak is trying on gloves for what seems like the first time ever. It's also not wrong that there are literally thousands of people behind that desk on the NFL on Fox set. Fourth quarter, Cowboys down four, Dak. Third and one, finds Ezekiel Elliott. First down, hold on. The center, number 72, Travis Frederick, called for tripping? Yeah. Questionable call, even if you're not a Cowboys fan. Fourth and 11, Dak to Amari Cooper. Reels it in, huge play, hold on. Turns out he did not actually make the catch. And the Cowboys turned it over on downs. And Brady and the Patriots hold on. Uh, Jerry Jones, not happy after this. Panthers and Saints, Michael Thomas, 94 catches this year. That's the most through 10 games in NFL history, and he is on pace to break Marvin Harrison's record for an entire season. That would be 143 set back in 2002. Panthers corner James Bradbury tasked with covering Thomas. Says, my whole goal is to make sure I don't get the Popeye arm. Let's see if he was able to succeed in that task. Third quarter, Saints are up six. Bradbury, uh, he lost Thomas, and Thomas has a touchdown. Oh, you know it's coming. I am what I am, or whatever. Uh, Breeze, career touchdown number 531. Eight back of Peyton for most all time. Here's Kyle Allen and DJ Moore, second TD catch of the game to tie it at 31. Moore. And then with two minutes to go, Joey Sly setting up for the go-ahead 28-yard field goal. He's missed two extra points in this game, and he misses this opportunity to put the Panthers ahead. 11th missed field goal this season. Ensuing Saints drive, third down, Breeze, Thomas, big first down. So big that it deserves, once again, the Popeye celebration. Three seconds to go. Will Lutz lining up for the game-winning 33-yard field goal attempt, which you would think would be simple, but he just sneaks it in inside the right upright. So the Saints win, improved a 9-2 with the victory. And we're heading over to the other set. Producer Tim is already uh, very nervous because he feels the show is uh, is packed and we need to hurry up. Yeah, that's it. It's packed with great cup coverage, packed with the NFL Sunday, packed with your Oilers. How about this, Dan? Cameraman Glenn, four, four more days we've got him. That's right. He's actually here just in a viewing capacity for the right, show. That's right, just watching the show with his son and uh, his son's father-in-law. And we should also mention, Cameraman Glenn turned 65 on Saturday. So happy birthday to you, sir. And this is what we were talking about earlier. Bombers fan Chris Matthew, a.k.a. Shorts Guy, in 2001 promised friends he would wear only shorts until Winnipeg won the Grey Cup. 18 years later, here's Matthew struggling to put on Zubaz sweatpants on the sideline as the Bombers win the Grey Cup. I mean, really struggling. Well, here's the thing. Maybe they should have got him a chair. <laughs> because or, putting uh, on pants while standing up sometimes can be a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> 
Really? Are you, are you at the age now where you're struggling to put pants on standing up? I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt. Do you lie on the bed and put them on? or? No, I sit in a chair. Okay. Uh, from Championship Sunday in the CFL to Week 12 of the NFL, Dan, this is the segment that everybody across the country is talking about. It's the Jay and Dan Deeper Dive. Uh, this was created by our uh, producer, G-Bone. And he's so proud of it. Bears fans celebrating American Thanksgiving early snuck an entire pumpkin pie into the stadium with whipped cream. See, I, I don't know if it's sneaking in or if he just brought it, because I think you're allowed to bring food products. A whole pie? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Bears play the Lions on Thanksgiving, is that right? Uh, I believe so. Somebody brought, I believe it was Jimmy Traina from Sports Illustrated brought this up. Might be time, after the Lions' performance on Sunday, might be time to retire the Lions being in Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right? Might uh, be time to end it. Buccaneers defensive tackle Vita Vey had a day. Second quarter against the Falcons became the heaviest player in NFL history to catch a touchdown pass. He weighs 347 pounds. In the fourth quarter, oh my goodness. he sacked Matt Ryan, becoming just the ninth player in NFL history to record a sack and score a touchdown <laughs> in the same game. He edged out former Raven Jonathan Ogden, who was 345 pounds in 2003. And an awesome player, too. Before the Dolphins-Browns game, Browns fans still not over the Miles Garrett suspension, Dan. Tailgaters uh, swinging a Steelers helmet and a Mason Rudolph pinata. A Mason Rudolph pinata. This is actually, the incident oh. itself was nothing to laugh about. This is actually pretty funny. Yeah, because they're swinging and trying not with a baseball bat, with a helmet. That's right. They're trying That's to break right. with a helmet. Uh, looks like uh, they might need some work on the roads in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> that was a massive pothole. That was not pretty. Uh, Dwayne Haskins picked up his first win and led Washington over Detroit Sunday after an interception in the dying seconds. Washington took to the field, ready to go into victory formation with Case Keenum in at QB. Why? Because Haskins was still on the sidelines taking selfies with fans. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah uh, Joe Theismann wasn't happy about it. Uh, former Redskins quarterback who gave his blessing to Haskins to wear his number seven. Mm -hmm. uh, called it unprofessional. And did you call it unprofessional? Let him know. Sure unprofessional and wrong. Not just unprofessional, unprofessional and wrong. Feels uh, Haskins has some growing up to do. I saw a video of uh, Michael Shea. He was taking selfies after the Grey Cup win, but that was well after the game. Right. The game was in hand. The game was in hand. <laughs> and. and uh, the game was over and they had been awarded the Great Cup, but I think he's still doing that right now. I think he might be With every right. Bombers fan that went to the You think he'll Cup. shave off his beard now, Michael No, Shea? that's him. Yeah, that's a... That's his thing. That's a beauty. When we come back, Dan, another historic achievement for Canadian tennis. Davis Cup highlights. You're watching Jay and Dan on TSN. In Canada in the final of the Davis Cup. Isn't that incredible? Taking on Spain, who is looking to win their sixth Davis Cup title. Canada looking for their first ever. Canada lost their first match, no, so no pressure, like Denis Shapovalov. You've just got to beat Rafa Nadal. Dolphins. That's all. Nadal would unleash the forehand, and Shapo can't get to it. Well, he got to it, but he put it into the net. Spaniard takes the first set 6-3. Second set needed tie-break championship point. Shapovalov rips a forehand of his own. Oh, Last time at? Nadal lost the Davis Cup singles match, Shapovalov was four years old. Championship point number two. Ah! It was on FS2. A strong Cup. showing for the Canadians, for best finish time. ever at the, the tournament. Nadal loves to bite trophies. It's like my cat, Ron who bites pieces of furniture. Seahawks, Eagles, Seattle a perfect 5-0 on the road this year, first quarter. Trickery, double lateral leads to a 33-yard strike from Russell Wilson to Malik Turner's first career touchdown. Wilson 3-0 in his career against Philly. Gets his league leading 24th passing touchdown. And yes, he makes sure that Turner gets that ball. 
Carson Wentz hasn't thrown a touchdown to a wide receiver in six weeks. His available targets on Sunday with a combined 14 catches this year. Second quarter, Wentz looking for his tight end. Picked off by Bradley McDougal. Wentz had a career-high four turnovers in the game, so that's two interceptions, two fumbles. Uh, not very high-scoring affair. 10-3 Seattle at the break. Fourth quarter, Seattle still up seven. Shot Penny. Takes the handoff, huge hole. Ronald Darby, the only man who can catch him. And nope, just bounces off him. Penny with a career-long 58-yard run. Ran for a career-high 129 yards. David Moore, that's a great celebration. The high leap. Eagles put up a season-low nine points, while Seattle improves to nine and two. Boy, the NFC West is going to come right down to the wire with mm -hmm. the Niners killing it and the Seahawks killing it. Mavs, Rockets, James Harden, and Luka Doncic among the top three scorers in the league. Early case for MVP. Both of them are making it. First quarter, Doncic has said bye-bye to P.J. Tucker. Nails the triple and the hawk. Doncic averaging a 30-point triple-double over his last 11 games. Second quarter, Harden splits the lane. Easy lay-in. Harden finishes strong. Harden, 32 points, 11 assists, 9 boards. Rockets down 10, heading to the fourth, where they've had problems. And Doncic has, averaging just over 4 points in the final frame. His least in a quarter this season. Doncic sinks the Euro step floater, part of a 13-point final frame. Hard loses the ball. Doncic picks it up. Gets the finger roll to go the other way. Doncic, 41 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds. Beats Harden and the Mavs. Hey, they've now won 5 straight. Hope you had the over in that one. Hey, only 3 games in the NHL Sunday, but plenty of news off the ice. So let's take a deeper dive NHL style. Double deeper dives. Blues defenseman. Robert Portuzo suspended four games for a cross-checking Nashville's Victor Arvidsson Saturday. Took two shots at Arvidsson. Players crash in the net and was assessed a two-minute minor. As a result of the cross-check, Arvidsson is going to miss four to six weeks with a lower body injury. This is the third suspension for mm. Portuzo. Yeah, a repeat offender under the CBA. He'll forfeit almost $70,000. Leafs forward Alexander Kerfoot will have a hearing Monday for his hit on Avalanche defenseman Eric Johnson Saturday. Oh. Kerfoot cross-checked Johnson from behind, causing him to crash into the board's head first, received a two-minute boarding penalty on the play. Uh, Kerfoot, now Leafs are off till Wednesday when they visit Detroit. Uh, so there you go. Uh, the NHL's longest active Ironman streak remains intact. During Saturday's game against the Hurricanes, Panthers defenseman Keith Yandel took a puck to the face. He lost nine teeth. Yandel returned for the third period. And after some serious dental work earlier Sunday, his Ironman streak continued. Played in his 821st consecutive game Sunday against the Sabres. Because if I missed, uh, if I lost nine <laughs> teeth at work, I would miss a year. I had the sniffles last week. I missed two <laughs> shows. You did. This is the thing. Keith Yandel is getting very close to a record nobody thought anyone would approach. Doug Jarvis has the record. 964 consecutive games played. Yandel is at 879 if he plays all 82 games this season. So he's going to break it next year Hey, if he stays healthy. And obviously nothing will keep him out of a game. Speaking of Iron Man streaks, mine continues even though um, my hand got stuck in a sliding door this Let's past week. Let's take a look at that. Really. Yeah. Well, show, th show that again. Yeah, it's uh, pretty banged up. It looks like you're uh, experimenting with, uh, with different nail polishes. No, that's just a, a busted hand. So, oh, my uh, goodness. Still to come. The Great Cup was the most prestigious piece of hardware handed out Sunday. That is until we hand out the Jannies. They're next. The Jannies. The good, the bad. Chris Strebler throws the end zone. Andrew Harris. Watch where he uh, catches this ball. Right in the Tigers' mouth. Slides right through. Huge game for Andrew Harris. Seattle Seahawks go into their bag of tricks. Eventually, Russell Wilson will find Malik Turner in the end zone. Just a beautiful throw. Like, just a perfect, perfect throw. Allowing Turner to willy-maze it. 
gorgeous stuff from Sierra's husband. Matt Ryan going deep, but it's Tampa's Carlton Davis he comes down with the ball. Oh, yep, they're fighting over it, but Carlton Davis is the one who ends up with it. Dan, everyone's talking about Theodic Hansen from Germany because that's a big hit. That's all the way back. Took out two of them. It's a double deal. Let's check out some great passing by the Oilers. Connor McDavid to Leon Dreisel. James Neal. What has he got, like 50 goals already? This one probably the easiest of the bunch. And that didn't take long. James. Eric Henry takes the handoff. And he gone. Turning on the Seriously, those are the Argos. Colors. Design everything. Stiff arm. Great shot. And how about standing down? Yeah, that's, right. that's pretty impressive. Brian Finley of your Cincinnati Bengals. Finley was trying to load up deep here. He's going Yikes, deep the Bengals the are bad, but that was okay, that's fine. Bengals are uh, in a perfect position to lock down that number one overall pick and take as uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, Looks like they're going to take him. He's going to be their quarterback of the future. So, Ryan Finley, you're not going to be the quarterback there. Oh, and 11. Ugh. Hey, uh, what do we got coming up? Oh, highlight of the night. Yep. That's nice. Hey, it's the highlight of the night. What have we got here? 2013 great the Great Cup's most outstanding player and Canadian, Andrew Harris. How he catches this. Oh, wow. What a game. Cody Fajardo probably saw that pass. He's like, ah, it didn't hit the uppers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, you blew it. Our segment, I, I guess I messed up uh, Popeye. I always thought he said, I am what I am. And it says here, I didn't say that. I said, I am what I am. I don't know. I thought he said, I am what I am. Remember that Popeye movie with Robin Williams? Boy, that was bad. And did oh. you know the Popeye's chicken is not named after that Popeye? Oh, no? No. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Dan, we also want to point one thing out James Duffy said earlier. Your season is like a Netflix series, right? <laughs> Starting with Saskatchewan, 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 Saskatchewan. Yeah, you should just say just Saskatchewan. That's Saskatchewan. Right. Saskatchewan. If you want to sound uh, uh, Canadian, yeah, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Win. He needs to know for next year at the Grey Cup. That's going to be in Saskatchewan. That's right. <laughs> Regina, to be exact. It's actually the only contributions you guys have ever made to my career. Thank you.